16th century, Nicholas Copernicus put forward the idea that the Earth goes round the Sun rather than the Sun going round the Earth. People sometimes say today that the Christian Church persecuted Copernicus. It put him in prison, or even put him to death. There's one problem with this claim. Copernicus wasn't killed, not for his scientific ideas, not for any other reason. He wasn't put in prison. He wasn't persecuted. When he died, he was a member of the church in good standing. This is another dishonest claim about the conflict between science and faith. Now, of course, we often get the story, a real corking conflict, Copernicus and the church. You have this story of this brave young poet, Nicholas Copernicus, a Mikhail Kopernik, as it would have been in Polish. Nicholas Copernicus is the Latinized version of his name. He was born into a high-ranking Polish family in 1473. He studied in Krakow, the new university at Krakow, and then became a doctor of both medicine and also civil laws in Bologna, Ferrara and other universities in Italy. He was also a passionate astronomer, like many of the men were of the day. And he came up with an idea about 1510. It's very hard to date this because he doesn't actually give us a date. Where he suggested you could understand the universe by putting not the Earth in the middle, but the Sun. And the movements of the Earth and the planets around the Sun made planetary calculation easier. He also saw no reason why that should not be the real truth. Now, he waits many years before he publishes. On the other hand, his ideas were widespread amongst many European scholars. And although he didn't publish until 1543, his ideas were obviously widespread by 1536. Copernicus was fully aware of the fact that most people in the world at that time would be utterly unable to accept seriously the idea of a moving Earth. A moving Earth flies in the face of common sense. Even today, most people casually don't understand why astronomers would say the Earth moves. They would take it as a matter of fact that it does, but they would take it on authority from their teachers, and their teachers in turn would take it on authority from their teachers. To demonstrate that the Earth actually moves is not a trivial thing. And if it does move, as Copernicus said that it did, then it moves in two ways. It moves around its axis, rotating, and it also moves revolving around the sun in a big circle. Even if it's simply rotated on its axis, people living here at our latitude, the latitude roughly of Philadelphia or London or New York, are going to be moving at hundreds of miles an hour, roughly 700 miles an hour, as we spin around the Earth. That's remarkable in and of itself. It certainly doesn't look that way. If you add in the second motion around the sun, then we're talking about tens of thousands of miles an hour on top of that. Now, it doesn't take a college degree in astronomy or in philosophy to conclude that that seems absurd. We're clearly standing on a fixed Earth, a solid Earth. We can't be moving at hundreds of miles an hour, let alone tens of thousands of miles an hour in any direction. That's so obvious to people that to overcome that burden required a lot a very careful argumentation. He was very reluctant to publish for reasons like this. He knew the burden of proof would be on him. It would be very difficult to persuade people to take this idea seriously rather than just to laugh it out of court. And he didn't publish. He held his publication back for at least 30 years until finally two clergymen persuaded him to do it, persuaded him to go ahead and take the plunge. One was a Lutheran clergyman, Gerd Redicus, a professor of astronomy at Wittenberg, who traveled all the way from Wittenberg out into East, what, is, what, what, what really is later East Prussia to, to uh, convince Copernicus that his ideas were important enough to print. And the other man was a Roman Catholic bishop, Tiedmann Giza, a, a close friend of Copernicus, who persuaded him eventually that if it was true, he had a responsibility to God to publish these ideas, because the truth is important. When people tell us about conflicts in the past between science and faith, 
We need to make sure that they have their facts right, because they often don't. And it's important to remember that sometimes people were opposed because the scientific evidence for their ideas wasn't that strong, not for religious reasons. But people sometimes say that Copernicus put off publishing his theory because he was afraid of being persecuted by the church. We'll look at this claim next time.